inshallah ta'ala, I'll be short and sweet. Because this is a day of Eid, this is a day of celebration. This is a day of Mubarak for us. And I want you to enjoy it. But I want you to remember something about this day. Wallahi, this is a day that is like no other days. Because we are in the most blessed days where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends His grace and His favor to His creation. Wallahi, a grace and a favor that were we not to have it, we would all be destroyed. Not a single one of us would ever achieve salvation without the grace that Allah extends to His creation in these days that we have just passed. And it culminated with the great day of Yawm Al-Arafah yesterday, Yawm Al-Hajj. On the day where Allah Azza wa Jal descends nearest to His creation in a matter that befits His majesty and glory, according to the hadith of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and He looks upon the Hujaj standing on the plain of Arafah, and He questions the inhabitants of the lowest heaven, and He asks, who are these people that have come to this place in this fashion, naked, dirty, disheveled, They've been through so much hardship and, and turmoil just to get here. Why have they come to this place? And the angels will respond, Ya Allah, they have come to this place to ask you. They have come to this place only to ask you. And of course, we can make dua anywhere. The whole earth has been made a masjid for us. We can make dua anytime, except in the places that is prohibited in, 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 in bathrooms and such. You know that. But Allah will, Azza wa will ask the inhabitants of that heaven which He knows best. What are they asking? What would cause them to go through all of this? To come to this place to ask me? They will say, Ya Allah, they are here to ask you for your forgiveness. They've come through all of this. They've gone through all of this hardship. All of Hajj is leading to Arafah. Everything you're doing from the Umrah to the Mudalifat, everything is leading you to Arafah. For those of us who have made Hajj. And Allah will say to those angels, bear witness that on this day I have forgiven everyone who is asking of me. I have forgiven them all. And one angel will step forward and say, Ya Allah, yes, but there is one amongst them. He is a fasiq. He is a rebellious, disobedient sinner. He just happened to get to this place by chance. Maybe he saw everyone going one direction. He decided I'm going to go too. Allah will say, be a witness that I have forgiven him too. That's the greatness of that day, the greatness of that place, the greatness of that dress rehearsal for Qiyamah. We have really and truly passed the most beautiful of days where Allah extends the greatest favor to us. But I'm going to tell you only one story today and this will sum up everything. This will sum up this entire day. This will sum up the reason that we're here today. The reason Ibrahim salam was willing to follow the commands of Allah and sacrifice his own son. He was willing to do it. There's only one reason we do anything for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. There was a conversation <clears throat> that took place long before any of us ever existed. A conversation that took place before any thing known as an insan existed. There was a conversation that, take, that took place. And Allah records it for us in Surah Al-Baqarah. At the very beginning, at the very beginning, when you get to verse 30, when you get to ayah 30, Allah Azza wa Jal says something very beautiful. It says in Surah Al-Baqarah verse 30 that Allah said to the angels, "Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa," that indeed I am going to place on earth a khalifa. Indeed, I am going to place on earth a vicegerent, a representative. A successive leadership on earth, a khalifa. Allah used a very beautiful word when describing the first of us. Now the angels already knew what this insan would be about. Allah already knew what this khalifa was going to be all about. Because the angels asked Allah, our Lord, will you place one in it who will cause mischief and shed blood? while we celebrate your praises day and night. Now the angels knew us and they knew us very well. 
They knew that the Khalifa that Allah was going to place on earth, what came out of it, would cause mischief. And we have fulfilled that role increasingly every single generation. We've gotten worse. And they will shed blood. Wallahi, it wasn't one generation had not passed to the very sons of that Khalifa shed blood. Subhanallah, they knew us. They knew us well. So they asked Allah a very rational question. If you want to be praised, Ya Allah, we praise you. If you want to be glorified and magnified, we do that. And we never fail in it. And we never cease to do it. And we do it the most perfect of anything that you have created. Allah's response to them was not to give them reasoning or to explain to them what He was creating or why He was creating it. He just responded by saying, I know what you don't know. I know what you don't know. So He created that Khalif, Adam alayhi salam, and He placed him in the garden with his wife Eve. And He placed in that garden a tree. And He told them, eat from anything, have enjoyed this Jannah. All of it is yours, except this tree. Just don't touch it. This one tree, don't touch it. Now we all know Allah already knew before even putting the tree in Jannah, they were going to touch it. He knew before placing them in Jannah, they were going to touch it. He knew before creating anything, they were going to touch it. He knew what was going to be the end result of this situation. Allah knew. So what did they do? They disobeyed. And they did that which they were told not to do. And Allah told them, you have to get down from here. You have to get down from here. To get back to this place, you're going to have to work for it. Now you're going to have to work. And then Allah reminded them that there will come from me guidance after this point now. And whosoever follows that guidance will be aright. And whosoever disways from that guidance, they will be losers. But the real beautiful part of this story is the solution that Allah Azza wa gave them to the problem that they faced of disobeying their Lord. Allah says, we taught them some words. We taught them some words to say to us, our Lord, we have indeed wronged our own soul. If you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, indeed we will be one of the losers. This is the lesson from this story, brothers and sisters. This is the lesson from the story. Because you have to understand, ya ikhwan wa khawat, life is not about whether you will make a mistake or not. The mistake is guaranteed. The mistake is guaranteed from the very beginning. The moment you were born, you were guaranteed to make mistakes. The sin is known. The Prophet ﷺ said, every son of Adam sins. Every son of Adam sins. All of you. And there's not a person in here blameless from sin. Not a person. But you know what's so beautiful? That if we had no sin, then days like this wouldn't be so beautiful. Days like yesterday wouldn't be so beautiful. Months like Ramadan wouldn't be so beautiful. Salah wouldn't mean so much. Eid wouldn't be so gracious. The Udhiyya that we make wouldn't mean anything if the sin wasn't there. It, life is not about whether you will make the mistake or not. Life is about what you're going to do with the mistake. Life is all about how you will deal with the mistakes that you are guaranteed to make. Because it's guaranteed that you're going to do it. You see, every religion in the world has tried ever since mankind started to deviate from the right path. Religions have come about in an attempt to solve this problem. Every religion has tried to solve this problem. Christianity has tried to solve this problem. What do we do with the mistake? Well, it can't be forgiven outright, so somebody else has to take it. Hinduism has tried to fix this mistake. Or if they've tried to clarify this vision, what do we do with a mistake? Well, you just live another life and you try to fix it in that life. Every religion has tried to solve this problem. We will make mistakes, so what do we do? Islam has the most simple and beautiful solution. The most simple and beautiful solution. Our Lord, we have indeed wronged our own souls. If you don't forgive us and have mercy on us, indeed we will be one of the losers. Because I know I'm going to sin. I probably sinned before I got here and I'll probably sin after I leave here today. I'm going to make a mistake. It's guaranteed. But what am I going to do with the mistake? 
You think shaitan did not know you were going to make a mistake? Absolutely. He doesn't beat you by getting you to make a mistake. Because that's guaranteed. He beats you by keeping you from fixing the mistake with Allah Azawajal. He keeps you from fixing the mistakes that you make. He f keeps you from apologizing to the brother that you wronged or to the sister that you wronged. He keeps you from repenting to your Lord whom you have sinned against. He keeps you from getting up and fixing yourself and going on and being a better Muslim today than you were yesterday and trying to be a better Muslim tomorrow than you were today. This is shaitan's game with you. To keep you wallowing in the sin. To keep you focused on the mistake. That if you make a mistake, I can't fix it. I've made two mistakes, five mistakes, ten mistakes. I've made a million mistakes. I've been on the wrong road for so long now. There's no way I can get back. See, that's the whole game that shaitan loves to play with you. Because let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. As long as you are living and breathing, as long as you are living and breathing, there's a chance for you. There is a chance for you. The only time there's no chance for you is on three occasions. Number one, you've committed outright blatant open shirk. And very few Muslims would do that without ignorance, knowingly. You know without a shadow of a doubt you're committing shirk. Number two, your soul has reached your throat, meaning that death is coming to you imminently. You are on the footstep of death. After that, it's too late. And number three, the major signs of the Day of Judgment, such as the sun rising from the west, the dab coming from the earth, all of these things that haven't happened yet. If these things happen, then your tawbah is too late. But until that moment, today you have a chance to fix the problem. Today you have a chance to fix every single mistake you've ever made. Every single sin you've ever done can go away today. Today, it can go away. Big, small, everything in between can be solved with this one solution. My Lord, I have indeed wronged my own soul. If you don't forgive me and have mercy upon me, I will surely be one of the losers. Subhanallah. That's what this day is about. That's what it's all about. That's the sacrifice that Ibrahim salam was willing to make. He was willing to do whatever Allah asked him to do, as long as Allah was willing to forgive them. Ya Allah, as long as you're willing to have mercy on me and my son, whatever you ask me to do, I'll do it. Doesn't matter. You want me to sacrifice my own self? Just tell me. I will do it. This is the attitude that Allah needs to fix what's in here. He needs that attitude that you're willing to do whatever it takes to fix my relationship with my Rabb. To fix my relationship with my brother or my sister or my father or my mother or my brother or my children or my parents. If you're willing to do whatever it takes, then you will find a Rabb who is Ghafur Rahim. You will find a Lord who is loving Al-Wadud. He loves and he loves for you to come back to him. The Prophet ﷺ said, Every son of Adam sins, but the best of those who sin are those who repent. Every son of Adam sins, but the best of those who sin are those who repent. على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والذين تابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عما بعد. So brothers and sisters, very simple. Today is your day to fix everything. Today is your day. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till next year. Fix it today. Fix it today. Today is the chance that Allah has given you. You woke up this morning living and breathing with Islam in your heart. Fix your relationship with Allah today. Don't wait. Do not wait. And let me tell you this one last final thing. There was a reason why Allah told the angels, I know what you don't know. I know what you don't know. Because yes, the angels said, we can praise you day and night, perfectly, flawlessly, sinlessly, without mistake. And Allah's praises could be sung for eternity by them. Allah's grandeur and power could be known by the heavens and earth and that which He has created. The very dynamics of Allah's creation prove everything about Allah Azawajal and He can be glorified and magnified through them. But you know what? 
there are some things about Allah that He wanted known. There are some attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal that He wanted known. And there was only one way they could be known. That was if Allah created a creation that had the choice to obey Him or disobey Him. And th then they would disobey Him, all of them would disobey Him. But amongst those who disobeyed Him would be some who would return to Him and repent to Him and ask Him to forgive them and He would forgive them. Then Allah could show that not only is He Al Qawi, but He is Al Ghafoor. Not only could He show that He is Al Latif, but He could show that He is, he is, he is uh, Al Rahim, Al Rahman. He could show that He is Al Adl. You see, these powerful attributes of Allah are shown through you, brothers and sisters. Allah shows how merciful He is by how He deals with you. Allah shows how powerful He is in the fact that He is so powerful that He can punish you for your sin, but He forgives you. This is the real power that we show the world of our Lord. That yes, I commit mistakes. But I can fix them with my Lord because yes, He is swift in justice. He is for mighty. He is powerful. But He is forgiving. And He said about Himself, my, ang my mercy will always overcome my anger. My mercy will always overcome my anger. And I give you two final small snippets to remind you of this. And then I'll give you a few announcements and we'll have a beautiful weekend insha'Allah ta'ala. There are two narrations from the Prophet ﷺ. One of them is good and one of them is more good. They are both about ilm al ghaib, some of the information of the unseen. That on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, there would be a person whom is being dragged into hell. He's being dragged to hell. The angels are carrying him away to throw him in the fire. And hellfire itself will pull back from that person. Hellfire itself will pull back from that person. And Allah will ask hell, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you that you pull back? And hellfire will say, my Lord, he is seeking refuge with you from me. He is seeking refuge in you from me. And Allah will say, then release my slave. Release my slave and let him go free. And there will be another person being dragged to hell, about to be thrown into the fire. And this person will say to Allah, My Lord, I never expected this from you. My Lord, I never expected this from you. What a bold statement. And Allah will ask my slave, Abdi, what did you expect from me? You did all of this. You committed the sin. You had the choice. You made the mistakes. What did you expect from me? And that person will say, I expected that your mercy could even reach someone like me. I expected that your mercy could even reach someone like me. And Allah will say, let my slave go free. Let my slave go free. You have to understand, brothers and sisters, Allah created you to live in Jannah. He created you to reside in paradise. That, what, that is what you were created for. To praise Him endlessly in Jannah. And to get the bounties that He created you to get. But that choice has now been put in your hands. That choice has now been made to you. Jannah is not something that Allah gives you or doesn't give you. It is a choice that you make. It is a choice that you make. If you go to hell, you walk into hell with your eyes wide open. And if you go to Jannah, it is because you have met a Lord who is forgiving. And you have sought that forgiveness. And you have done something in this life to make that forgiveness worthy. So it's all in your hands. So figure out today what you want to do, inshaAllah ta'ala, with the rest of your life. Because the rest of your life starts right now. I don't care what you did yesterday, last week, last month, last year. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. If you want to fix it now, fix it today. Insha'Allah ta'ala. You will find the Rabb who is forgiving, who is merciful, who is loving, who is forbearant, who is patient with you, and who will love to give you Jannah if you only ask Him for it. Now, Insha'Allah ta'ala, it's my pleasure to be with here all weekend. And I have to say, Jazakur Khair, and thank you for allowing me to come be in this beautiful community again for the third time. As the Prophet ﷺ said, La yashkurullah man la yashkurun nas. That whoever does not thank the people, he doesn't thank Allah. So I'm very thankful. Even though my flight was cancelled and I didn't think I was going to make it, but I drove 14 hours last night. Literally got here two hours ago to be here with you today because I do love this community. 
tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, and I will be doing the khutbah for Jummah, inshallah. Tomorrow at 3.45 p.m. there's a fiqh of da'wah workshop. For those who want to, I'm not going to make you a da'i in a couple hours, it just can't happen. But for those of you who want to get a taste of what da'wah may be about, and so that maybe you can go on to further your studies in da'wah, and maybe I can come back and further present these topics and present this course in a detailed manner, then come tomorrow at 3.45 in theater number 9, and we would do a crash course in fiqh of da'wah, and fiqh of calling people to Allah calling other people to this beautiful way of life called Islam, telling those people outside who have never been in this building what this religion is all about. So if that is something that interests you, which it should interest you because it is a command from Allah, ud'u ila sabir rabbika bil hikmah, then come to theater 9 at 3.45 p.m. tomorrow. And then in Maghrib Salah, we will be having a community dinner and barbecue, celebrating this wonderful days of Eid, insha'Allah. So come tomorrow for the workshop and then stay for the barbecue and the dinner, insha'Allah. Remember, the Prophet والسلام, said that the Muslims have Eid'ain, two Eids, Eid'ain, that's it, two Eids, Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha. We are not allowed, as I said in the khutbah, the worst of affairs are that which you put into this religion. And every one of them is a bid'ah, and every bid'ah is a dalala, and every dalala goes into the fire. Every misguidance goes astray. So please, parents. Protect your children from this fitna and this facade that's going on outside, these other holidays. Because I'm guaranteeing you, I've done the research. I've been around, born and raised, right here. Actually, about an hour from here, if you want to be specific. All of these holidays have nothing at their core but evil. Nothing at their core but shaitan and his attempt and his deceit at shirk. So please, keep your children from these things, protect them from them. Let them know that we have something better. As the Prophet ﷺ, when he came to Medina, they were celebrating some holidays that the Jews were celebrating. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has replaced those days with better days. He's replaced those days with better days, and you only have two of them, insha'Allah. So, please, keep our children from this fitna and facade that's coming on, especially the one that's coming up in a few days, insha'Allah. Also, please make a donation to support this masjid. This is a new masjid, this is a new center. It is in its infancy still. Please support your Islamic center with whatever you can. This is your home. This is your responsibility. This masjid is not the responsibility of the board of trustees. Let me tell you that right now. Because nobody owns a masjid. A masjid is a waqf for Allah Azza wa Jal. It belongs to Allah. And it is only in the hands of those who will care to take for it, according to the Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet So that's your responsibility. To care take for this beautiful center that you have. And make a shining honor for Islam here in Tennessee, insha'Allah ta'ala. Also, early voting has started, so get out and exercise your right to vote. One thing I will say, I don't get into the whole voting thing too much, but one thing George Washington said very clearly, that freedom of speech is a, is a right. It is an inalienable right that, Allah, that the humanity has here in this country. And he said, the moment you lose that freedom of speech, you will be led like sheep to the slaughter. This is coming from the very first president of this, of this country that you are now residing in. That once you lose your freedom of speech, you will be led blind like sheep to the slaughter. So exercise the rights that you have been given under this constitution. Exercise them well to speak up, to say the truth, to do the right thing, and to be active in your community. Because if you're not active in your community, then you can't complain about what happens in it, inshallah. And lastly, as everyone knows when I come here, I always bring my DVDs for da'wah. And I produce these DVDs over many, many years. Many, many years I've been producing these DVDs. And these DVDs are for two reasons. For you to learn how to give da'wah properly. For you to learn how to tell people about Islam. Because not everyone has the best arguments. And this is something that I have chosen as a profession. I'm not good at it, but maybe I can help you with something. And they are for you to give to people. Maybe some people say, I don't know how to open my mouth about Islam. Well, then you can get one of those DVDs and hand it to your neighbor or your coworker or your friend and they can do their own research about Islam and whoever they're going to contact, they're going to contact me because my name and number is all over those DVDs for some reason. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but uh, I'm living with it now, inshaAllah ta'ala. And people are coming to Islam regularly because of these DVDs. And they're on all aspects of religion, on atheism, on Hinduism, on Christianity, on, on the, 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 the misconceptions about Islam. There are some for your children, telling them about hellfire, telling them about Jannah, telling them about akhlaq. 
So please, the table is right outside this main entrance. Please go out and get them. They only cost $10, which is very little for a professional DVD. But that's the only way I can keep making them and keep spreading them out and keep sending them. We have spent over 100,000 of them in the past five years. 100,000 of them have been given out all over the United States and the world. So please come and support that project right outside on the table, inshallah. And I look forward to seeing you all at Salat al Jumu'ah. If not, I will see you all tomorrow. But tonight, the program for tonight has been canceled. Been canceled tonight. The one that is after Maghrib has been canceled. And the only reason I'm going to tell you, I'm going to accept the responsibility because I've been driving for 14 hours and I will probably will not sleep till after Jummah. And that will be about all that I have left. So inshallah, I'll see you all tomorrow, uh, bright and early after Jummah, inshallah. Jazakur khairan. There's also some more announcements, so stay please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.